it's time to play a little bit of Slay the Spire. Now, I've heard a lot about this game, but uh, I've only had it for about a week now. I mean, I think it's been in early access for a few months, but uh, I was getting a little bored of the games that I played already, so I decided to pick this one up. It has some similarities to Ascension, but mainly that's the main reason I'm, I'm showing it to you all, because you know, for anyone that looks at this channel, you know, I've mainly just covered stuff about Ascension, but I do play all the games, but this is that gradual step towards maybe something that you might find interesting. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the basic character, <clears throat> and then I will show you how the game works. So, Act 1. Only thing I really know about the acts is that there's three in all. As you beat the third act, that's technically the end of the game for right now. But we start off in Act 1, and we progress forward. Alright, so I'm going to show you a few things first before I start a battle. Um, first, like I said, like Ascension, you start off with 10 cards. So, these are the 10 cards that's in our deck. And also, like Ascension, you start with 5 cards in your hand. Unless otherwise stated, which, you know, we start off with five cards. You see all the cards in the top left, that's their cost. And everything on the top row is an attack card. And most of the stuff on the bottom row is a spell. Now, normally that doesn't come into play unless, you know, there's a certain effect. But what you just need to know is each of these cards costs one. Uh, of course, damage deals damage to the enemy block prevents damage that would be dealt to you and this card bash costs two instead of the normal one it does a little bit more damage and it also applies something that's called vulnerable so thankfully since you know this is a newer game when you hover over a card it, it gives you a, a good description of what's going on so vulnerable creatures creatures take 50 percent more damage so when it says apply to vulnerable that means for the turn that you play it the card is vulnerable well, that monster that you're bashing is vulnerable and the following turn so you know if you bash now and then just say play a strike strike does 50% more damage so instead of strike doing 6 it'll do 9 and then the following turn you can do more damage so this is the starting deck that we're working with 5 strikes, 4 defend and 1 bash now when we look at our map the first thing you will always face at the beginning of an act is going to be the enemy. So you see these three blinking faces. It's just basically saying, what path do I want to choose? Now you see as the line travels up, there's different things that you see along the way. Um, so I'll just say this one is question mark. Question mark is unknown. Where it says, you know, you may encounter basically anything. Um, if we see a merchant, we can use the goal that we have to either buy a card, buy some other things that we can that we'll see throughout the game, or you can banish a card from your deck to make it thinner. So kind of like playing a void card that would you know remove a apprentice or militia. You're doing the same thing with maybe one of the starter cards that isn't as good as cards you're going to be picking up throughout the game. Um, treasure will give us um, treasures will give us a relic a relic is like we see in this top left hand corner so at least right now there's three different characters each character starts off with a relic a relic is an effect that is basically always active so this is at the end of each combat so where this uh, where this point is on the map once I clear this and go to the next thing that's the end of a combat so I mean in combat you may face two or three monsters but once you're at the end of that you're gonna recover six health the other two characters don't recover anything at the end he has a perk of being able to heal some of the damage that you may have lost um, rest when you get to a rest stop uh, you can either heal or you can upgrade a card Upgrading a card if you right click on Just say well, I'm sorry not right click if you just click on one of these cards where it says view upgrade 
you see instead of it saying strike it says strike plus now and then green shows the increased damage that you get so instead of it doing six damage it does nine instead and one other thing is the elites elites are a lot tougher to kill but you get a another relic when you beat them so we're gonna go ahead and start off so i'm gonna say any mini money blah blah let's go with that one let's go with the one in the middle all right we're facing guy that's waving around these two sticks now a good thing about this game is it always gives us an idea of what our opponent's gonna do so normally it would have a dagger icon above his head if he's gonna attack or a shield icon if he's gonna defend we are always going to attack our opponent first I mean, we're always gonna have our actions take place first before he does anything so this enemy intends to use a buff. Buff normally means it's gonna he's gonna make himself stronger. So maybe on the next turn he's gonna do an attack. So at least for right now, uh, we can either defend or we can strike. Now we can play any combination of these, of course, because each one is worth one energy. And we start off with three. So I can play three strikes, or I can play maybe two defenses and a strike. But defense is basically going to give us a block. So let's say if I played this to gain five block, the next attack my opponent does during this turn will be blocked to prevent me from losing health. So just say if I block for five and he attacks for five, then that five block is going to disappear. But since we know that he isn't going to attack us right now, we can just go ahead and use all of our attack cards. So when you lift it up, you see the weird arrow and you highlight the enemy you want when you let go, it's gonna go ahead and cut them. All right, so everything's spent. Everything's in red to show that I can't use it. And the only option I have now is to end my turn. So then we get to see what he's gonna do. So incantation, uh, he's gonna get stronger. So he's gonna attack us four or six, okay. So, of course, we got a few different choices again. I can defend, and if I defend, I'm going to have five block. Now, if I stop the defense right there, I have five block. He's going to attack me for six. Five of that block is going to be absorbed, and then I'll be one that's left over that's going to go through, and I go down to 79. Um, I could use two defenses which will put my block at 10 and then his 6 attack will take away from the 10 block and then there will be 4 block left but block always disappears at the end of the turn so you're kind of limiting your attack potential if you're doing a lot of blocking or you can say you know what I'm okay with taking 1 damage and then you know playing block but in this case, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. Our relic says that we gain six health at the end of combat. So he's going to deal six damage to me. I go down to 74. Technically, if I don't take any more damage, I'm going to go back up to 80. So we're going to do that instead. We're not going to play any defense cards, but what we're going to do is we're going to play our card Bash. So Bash has a cost of two and it does eight damage and it makes the enemy that I attack vulnerable for this turn and the next turn. The reason it's doing it for two turns, it says apply to vulnerable. So when you apply something, it's always going to take effect immediately. So just say like if it just said apply one vulnerable, it'll be vulnerable just for the turn I play it. But this will also be on the following turn. So I'm play that. It's going to take eight damage and now strike like I said normally does six damage but as I hover it over see it just changed to nine damage instead so all the damage I'm gonna do the following turn is gonna do 50% more damage and I'm banking on the fact that if I draw two attack cards I have enough to take him out all right so I got what I need because each strike it's going to do 9 instead. And I had 74 health. I went back up to 80. 
So whenever you defeat an enemy or an elite, basically whenever you're in combat, uh, at the end of it, you get gold, which you can use as a merchant to either banish cards from your deck or uh, buy cards, buy relics. And you also get to draft one card in your deck. So it'll give you three choices and whichever one you acquire, of course, that goes into your deck permanently. So I just highlight over these real quick so you can see what they do. So cost of one, it can gain three block and exhaust means you would get rid of that card for the rest of the combat. And there are some cards you can get that just have like a negative effect. Like there'll be cards that's like curse. Uh, a card that's cursed may, it may deal damage to you if it's left in your hand at the end of the turn. It may prevent you from playing so many cards in a turn but that way you can banish it and it does give you more block than a normal block so the fan only gives you five I mean it gives you seven at the cost of one yeah clash this can only be played if every card in your hand is an attack deals 14 damage doesn't cost a thing but something to keep in mind is normally cards that block our skill cards, our strikes, and our bashes are attack. So if I'm holding any of these, I can't play that card. Now you could, of course, you can just play the defensive cards first, and then play Clash, and that way it can deal 14 damage. And then you have uh, Power Through. So one cost card is also a skill, and it says add two wounds to your hand, gain 15 blocks. I actually don't quite remember what wounds do, so I'm going to go with Clash. Uh, typically cards that don't cost anything seem to be pretty good. Now we went to a question mark which is kind of a random event. Now sometimes you are faced with these ultimatums that you have to do. So this says I can either, uh, oh he's, he's trying to, I have to pay for these. So, I could pay 35 gold to heal 20. Uh, that's not worth doing because we're at max. Or I can pay 50 gold to remove a card from my deck. Um, removing cards, um, I think is, I mean, it's a good thing to do uh, maybe a little later on. Um, I don't know quite what my deck's theme is. It's going to be sometimes it may be more defensive oriented, you know, combo oriented, attack oriented. So I would hate to get rid of a, you know, a card that may swing in either direction when I don't know how it's going to go. I mean, we've only added one card to the deck. So right now I'm just going to leave. I'm going to hold on to my gold because normally shops will appear kind of later up. So that way you can, oh, look, there's another shop right there where you can possibly buy. A uh, better card. Okay, so it was another question mark, and this time it was a monster. He's gonna attack with uh, 11 damage. Now, my hand lines up to be pretty good actually. So, Clash can only be played if every card is attack, which is not. I got two skill cards, and I have three attack cards. It's going to attack me with 11 damage. If I play one defend, then I'm going to take six damage. The shield is going to absorb five of that 11, and then I'm going to take six. But I still should play the other defensive card because keeping this in my hand is going to stop me from playing Clash. So we're going to take even less damage. We're only going to take one since we have 10 block and he has 11 attack. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use a strike and use a clash. So we're gonna take one damage from that exchange and then see what we're gonna draw afterwards. Okay. See, this is a different symbol. It says enemy intends to block and attack for seven damage. So, hmm. 
So we can try to block that or we can ignore it. Um, I'm gonna use bash first. So if I bash, we know he's gonna gain seven. So if we stop attacking him right now, he has 16 HP and he's gonna gain seven block on the next turn. So basically he'll have 23 health on the next turn. Um, if we strike him now, we do nine more damage. So he'll be at seven plus seven, he'll be at 14. Um, we're gonna do that instead. So he's gonna have seven HP, he's gonna gain seven block. So we just have to do 14 damage, which should be likely since he's vulnerable and our attacks are gonna do more damage. He is gonna hit us for seven. It's gonna put us down to 72. But our burning blood relic is going to kick in if we can go ahead and finish him on the next turn. So even though I'll be at 72, um, I'll heal back up 6 to put me at 78. I'll take very little damage from that exchange. Come at me. Uh-huh. One shot. See, 8 damage. 12 damage. 8 damage. Damp. Damp. Aha. So, of course, we got gold. And we got a potion. Potions go up here. Potions are kind of like items, like in Pokemon, or I guess items in any RPG. Um, they don't count as an energy. You can just kind of use them whenever you want to. But when I got says, add a random skill card to your hand. And it costs, ooh, costs zero for the turn. Um, you know, you can choose when to play them. I mean, you can hold up to three. There's always cards that are the exception to some rules where you can make, you know, maybe you have five slots. Maybe there's a potion that gives you multiple potions, but at least as of right now, we'll probably just hold on to that. And we can add a card to our deck. So, Entrench says you can double your current block. Now, unless otherwise stated, block doesn't carry over from turn to turn. So if you got 15 block and you didn't get attacked at all, you know, that 15 block's gone. Uh, see, it costs two to use. So even in the best case scenario, I get three energy per turn. If I play a defend, puts me a five block, and I double the five from at 10. I mean, that's not better than just playing two of them. And that way I still have, you know, some energy left to do something else. So at least as of right now, this car is kind of trash. As of right now, there are ways to get more than three energy. Um, you know, maybe this car, you see that car can be a little less expensive if I upgraded it later. So normally when you're at a, a rest stop, you can choose to either heal up or upgrade a card. So you see the upgraded version of that card, it drops down to one energy instead. So that way if I played, um, if I play defend, defend for, you know, two energy, I play two, two defends, I'm at 10 block, I double that, I'm at 20. That way, that's better than, you know, just playing these three normally that would give me 15, but as of right now, it's not the, not the best. Um, True Grit. Yeah. We'll go with Clothesline. Clothesline deals 12 damage, which is pretty good for me right now since... I have one card that does six. So this is basically two strikes played together and it makes something weak. So 25% less damage. So if a monster is attacking for eight attack, you hit him with a clothesline, it's gonna do six attack instead. So basically two strikes and one with an additional effect. We'll go with clothesline. Now we can go left or we can go right. I'm a, uh, um, probably take three more turns and then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up because it's, it's basically the gist of the game. 
um, we're going to I want to try to explore more things to at least show you the, the merchant shop so I'm gonna go right there's a question mark you duck into a small hut inside you find what appears to be a forge the smithing tubes are covered with dust yet a fire roars inside the furnace you feel on edge and this is an example of the curse we were talking about so curse is a card that is unplayable so it gets added to your deck when you draw it you can't play it I mean you can discard it um, if there's a card like one of the ones we could have chose before that exhausts the card if it's ex if it's exhausted that means that it's gone for the rest of the combat still in your deck but at least you don't have to worry about it in that encounter um, I can obtain a relic but you cannot play more than three cards this turn I see it's a 75% chance I get it which is you know basically I am gonna get it um, so sometimes we want to look ahead on the map because let's say at this merchant for instance you can pay the merchant to banish a card from the discard pile so if I'm gonna get a relic and probably get cursed I can immediately just remove this curse from my deck so I'm gonna go with that alright so I got strawberry so it raised my HP by seven and now I got crap in my deck but that's cool we'll go we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it so we're gonna go to the merchant and this is weird guy that's sitting down and it shows a few things we can do so there's cars at the top and it shows their gold costs um, we've already seen attack cards We've seen some skill cards and haven't seen a power. Power is a lot like a construct. When you play it, it's just active for the rest of the combat. So whenever you draw a status, you draw one card. Status is what happens when some enemies, they don't attack you, but they kind of, they, they tend to put trash in your deck. They put something that's like, uh, you know, slime or basically kind of like a curse. Is what they give you temporarily now curses don't stick well the statuses don't stick it's just kind of something that some enemies give you so if you're in an encounter like that and you play evolve then you can you know you can draw whenever you get one um, we get some colorless cards down here didn't really matter if they're colorless or not it just kind of shows you some extra effects so um, debuffs is, you know, of course the opposite of a buff. Buff, like we saw the first guy, he made himself stronger. Um, a debuff would be, you know, making me vulnerable instead. So normally, if an enemy made me vulnerable, I would take 50% more damage the next time they attack me. Uh, you know, gaining one artifact would prevent the next time that would happen. So if I already got an artifact in play, it won't make me vulnerable. Nah, that's not how I go. Uh, upgrade all of your cards for the rest of the combat. That's a very good card, but as you see, we don't quite have the funds for it. The stuff at the top are um, different relics. So just to show you those real quick. Um, whenever you play a power, a random card in your hand costs zero for the turn. So our deck we don't have any powers we have attack cards we got skill cards and we got a curse so at least right now if we could afford mummify hand it, it wouldn't really work out mummify hand would work with something like this so we have to buy two cards for me to really see the benefit of the hand uh, this thing enemies with vulnerable take 75% more damage rather than 50 so we only got one card that can really make someone vulnerable which is the bash 
with Bash, you know, will be even more effective with that card. And two bots start of each combat at a random colorless card. These are the colorless cards. So everything in red is kind of specific to uh, the ironclad, like the character I have. And sometimes there's some synergy with it. Colorless don't really have a synergy. They're more of a, um, they're kind of more of a, just a, a generally a good card. They don't fit into a specific thing, but they're just a, a good all around card. And there's potions I can buy. Ooh. But we're just gonna get rid of trashy card. Mm. We'll at least get here. We go face an elite and then we go stop. Alright. So want to hit me for three I can clash and kill him I have to empty I have to empty the defense cards though but I don't have another way to well yeah I can just do that for 12 damage um, this doesn't really matter all that much Let me see if this does anything. Yeah. Okay. See, the block didn't really do anything because he's not attacking. So, frail. My blocks give me less for one turn. So, normally, block, I mean, normally, defend gave me five instead of gives me three. But. We know that he's not gonna attack next turn. We can just play some strikes. And hopefully the following turn we can we can mow him down. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Looks like everything in my hands attacked. So I'ma bash him first. So that this will do fifty percent more damage. So well, that says 14. If you hover, it should say 21. Blam! Blam! Got some gold. And we can get another card. So. Whew. So, power card. Like, you know, something that just stays in play. Uh, whenever you lose HP from a card, gain one strength. Uh, we don't have anything that we can lose HP from. Disarm if an enemy has strength. With strength, however much strength you have is how much additional damage you deal. So let's say if you had a strength of 5, then a card like Strike would do 11 instead. Because it's going to be the 5 strength added to whatever damage from the card. And then second win, Exhaust, as in remove for the rest of combat. All nine attack cards in your hand and gain five block for each. So the only nine attack cards I have are these four. So if I play one and I banish two defend cards, then I would get ten block. But another beautiful thing about these card selections is I don't like any of them I can just skip so I'm gonna go to the rest area I can either rest and gain my HP which we don't need because we're at full or we can choose to upgrade a card now we're gonna upgrade something normally I try to upgrade things that make a card less expensive so just a clothesline gets upgraded does two more damage and it makes our opponent weaker for one more turn weaker as an am amount of damage he deals to us but bash 
At least for right now, Batch is okay. Now, why we get bash? Cause I'd rather deal 50% more damage than take 25% less damage. And we got 12 cards in our deck. If one card does vulnerability, we draw five cards per turn. We can almost always keep him vulnerable. Cause we, have, we get the card about every one out of three. And he's gonna be weak for about one out of three. But math works out. So last one is going to be facing an elite. So you see in terms of attack, he is quite beefy. Beefy. But we're going to, since I'm going to stop it at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my potions. So add a random skill card to your hand, it costs zero. So this skill is upgrade a card in my hand for the rest of combat. Now, whenever you want to see what and what the upgrade version looks like, you just click on a card in your deck and hit View Upgrade. So it goes from dealing six damage to nine damage. Um, Clash goes from fourteen to eighteen. So that will do you four more damage. That will do three more damage. So we're going to do that instead. And we have uh yeah, cuz we get we have to play all of this in order to play clash. So we're going to play armaments. We're going to upgrade that. So that's going to do 18 and then we're going to strike Okay, see our shield went away, <clears throat> but we got the bash card. So we can bash him, we can bash him in his face. You see, he's already missing the eye, we bash him in his face. So that way he'll be vulnerable for the next two turns. But look at that attack. Whew. Coming at us with 18. We can prevent five of it, or we can eat all of that 18 and try to strike afterwards let's say we're gonna go ahead and bash just to show if we strike we can either hit them for nine since it does 50 percent more damage or we can block some of that i'm gonna play this as though i was you know trying to make it to the very end and that would be to try to block some of it still a ton of damage but him being vulnerable means that we can kind of try to rush the attack a little bit. Another good thing that you're going to see from here. Um, armaments. Just upgrade a card in your hand for the rest of combat. So close line does 12 damage and 2 weak. If we upgrade it, it does 14 damage and 3 weak instead. So that works for us. So when we get a little bit of block, so we have five block for 18, but weak is going to make that attack a little bit lighter. So it's going to do 13 damage instead. So we went from originally taking 18 to taking eight, and we still dealt a decent amount of damage to our opponent. All right, so it does a little swirly thing. So um, this is gonna inflict a powerful negative effect on you. Um, this is the last turn of him being vulnerable. But look at that, we got back around to bash because our deck's not very big. So that's what I was saying earlier about keeping him on a continuous like vulnerability weakness. So we're gonna bash his head again, and then we go strike him. So now he's gonna do whatever. I don't know what, what Siphon Soul does. Okay. Let's see, some effects going on. Uh, blocks deal one less damage.
and decrease my attack by one. Thankfully, you don't need to work out the map. The map kind of works itself out normally. So strike normally does six damage. Because minus one strength, we're going to take one away from that six to make five. And if we cursor over, it hops back up to seven because it's going to do 50% more damage. Now that number is, it tends to round down from my experience because, you know, that should be 7.5, but you can't do 7.5 in the game, so you got to round it down to 7. Um, we're going to try to absorb a little bit of that damage. You see blocks only gave me 4 apiece instead of 5, and that's because of this uh, dexterity, negative 1. Uh, we can clash. And we can play a strike. See, it may seem like a misplay that, hey, if you played another strike, then he would be dead. But that's the downside of this card, because I had to get rid of both of these. So it's just unfortunate that if I was only holding one of these, yeah, that would have been enough to finish the job, but I'm about to take five more damage. And this should be it. I mean, we could hit him with almost anything. Uh, we'll, we'll bash him over the head for good measure. All right, and when you finish feeding an elite, so you get a little bit more than normal. You get a little bit more gold since it was a little bit harder to kill. You get another relic. It says if your HP is full, gain one energy at the start of each turn. So instead of doing three out of three, three energy is what you start with. You start with four if I was at the maximum, which I'm not. Oh well. Um, attack potion. So give me a random attack card that costs zero. And I can add another, another card to the deck. And I'll make this choice real quick. So Iron Wave is deals five, well, it gives me five block and five damage. Uh, Intimidate will make every monster weak. At the cost of zero and pommel strike does nine damage and draw a card um all decent choices um hmm. oh. I always look to see what synergies you have. Um, well, we have a lot of synergies, so we can make one individual card vulnerable, an individual card weak, and this doesn't really punish us by having a skill in our hand since um, it's cheap. And since Since we're unsure of which one to get, I think a good tiebreaker is the card that doesn't cost anything. Yeah, let's get Intimidate. And Treasure Chest. So I think we got to see one of each thing. Treasure Chest is going to have a relic in it. So I got gold and I got a tiny chest. So I gain 30 gold and I'm 10% more likely to find treasure in mystery rooms. So that is an example of Slate Aspire. See, I am on floor nine. Overall in the game, there's 50 floors. We're about halfway through act one in which this guy is the boss. And Every time you play, the paths are different, the cards you gain are different. It's three different characters that give you um, one a unique relic, unique cards that only they can get. Colorless cards, like you saw earlier, colorless cards that have like the gray uh, borders. Uh, you can see those amongst any of the three characters, but um, 
any card that is, you know, red all around, basically my entire deck is specific to the Ironclad. So unique decks, unique paths, unique cards, unique relics, and still the deck building aspects that I enjoy from Ascension. 